Today, we are spending five minutes with Jeff Watson, MP of Essex. He is the first Conservative MP to be elected in 46 years, and he was also designated by the Library of Parliament as the first auto worker to be elected into the Parliament of Canada. So, Jeff, what does your job entail? Uh, well, uh, the job entails a lot of work, obviously. I mean, you're working not only on behalf of your constituents, but on behalf of uh, our country, moving our country forward. Uh, it's a great honor to do that, and I can tell you uh, the workload is heavy, the responsibility is a lot. Uh, Parliament uh, uh, is about half the year, and then the other half of the year we're here in the constituency uh, doing meetings, uh, meeting with stakeholders in the region to understand their priorities and their vision, uh, and how we connect that to what the government is doing to move this region forward. Um, you know, we do uh, several hundred community events uh, as well in that six-month uh, period of time. So. Uh, there's a lot to it and it's a wonderful job. It's very rewarding. Uh, you get the benefit at the end of the day of saying we've been able to move the country forward, we're moving our region forward, uh, and I just get to uh, serve the communities I love and the country I love and do it both at the same time. What is the most interesting parliament meeting you have been to? Uh, well, I think uh, hands down uh, uh, committee work, which can be extremely valuable uh, in the House of Commons. Uh, I've been on the uh, Standing Committee on Transport, Infrastructure and Communities for a little over five years now. Uh, I called for hearings uh, a little over a year ago, almost two years ago now, into uh, uh, the uh, uh, manufacturing defects at Toyota. And uh, of course, we, uh, in uh, one seven-minute round of questioning, were able to uh, determine that Toyota uh, regrettably, but uh, they violated uh, Section 7 of the Motor Vehicle Safety Act uh, for not disclosing uh, brake pedal defects uh, both to Transport Canada and more importantly to the public uh, when they knew about it uh, uh, for quite some time. How many years have you been MP for? I'm now in my eighth year. I've got seven years behind me. Uh, we're about halfway through the, uh, the eighth year. Uh, I'm the first uh, Conservative uh, in this entire region, believe it or not, elected four consecutive times, and that's since Confederation in 1867. What is your big biggest accomplishment since becoming MP? Oh, wow, uh, there are a lot of things that uh, we've participated in, but I think uh, the biggest single thing that we've done is been able to move this region through uh, the toughest recession uh, since the Great Depression uh, and do it with uh, really historic funding. Uh, we were able to uh, um, help uh, Chrysler and General Motors restructure and uh, avoid bankruptcy here in Canada. Uh, that stabilized the base of our economy. That was really important uh, that people were working in that industry, an industry that supports so many others. And then in the ensuing probably uh, 20, 24 months, uh, we were able to secure uh, well over 540 million federal dollars for investments, including the Mediaplex we're sitting in uh, today. Uh, all things that are dramatically helping to reshape this community, reposition the local economy, and in doing so, help reposition our, our nation's economy. What spiked your interest to get into politics? Uh, well, the, f uh, the first, uh, uh, really sort of the first incident, because I grew up in a family that was um, uh, non-political, if you will. We didn't really discuss politics. Uh, um, and uh, but my first real interest came in high school. I was at an all, they had an all candidates meeting in the 1988 election uh, in my high school cafeteria, uh, and it was the first moment where I realized maybe I, I didn't really realize I didn't understand exactly what uh, the three candidates at the time were talking about. But I really needed to uh, begin that process of, uh, of figuring it out. And then, as I said a little bit earlier, the um, uh, in university, uh, beginning to figure out where my own political values were, participating in the Charlottetown referendum, uh, on the organizing campaign in this region, um, all of those things moving, uh, moving that uh, desire for politics or the, the love of politics, if you will, uh, into real active politics. And uh, you know, I, I lost a couple elections here in Windsor. Uh, and uh, ultimately was successful uh, in defeating a cabinet minister who was the daughter of a cabinet minister out in Essex. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a great, uh, great progression, uh, if you will, from interest uh, to elected uh, politics. And anybody can do it. What do you see as your most important responsibility being an MP? Oh, wow. Um, well, in our system, uh, the Westminster system of parliamentary democracy, really the MP has to balance three things on any given day. Uh, one is the interest of the party. We have a party system, if you will. Um, the interests of my constituents. Uh, what are their hopes, dreams, values, aspirations? 
And, uh, and then the third is the individual uh, MP's conscience, my own conscience. At the end of the day, I have to be able to put my head down on a pillow and feel good about the uh, choices and decisions I've made. Uh, it's not always an easy um, calculus, if you will, to perform, but uh, you know, we try to make the best decisions that balance those three things. What do you hope your biggest accomplishment will be? Uh, my only desire is to serve uh, in whatever capacity. Uh, you know, we, we got, as I said earlier, we got through the Great Recession, which was good. Uh, we've sown a lot of seeds for future prosperity in this region, uh, but that work is far from done. Um, uh, you know, we hope to uh, really catapult, and I hope to play a, as much of a role as I can in, uh, with our government to stay focused on priorities, to move this region uh, forward to great prosperity. What do you think about the new bridge crossing? Uh, it is uh, going to be the single most uh, transformative thing uh, for this region uh, and for our country. Our Prime Minister has been clear that this is the number one infrastructure priority for Canada. Uh, it supports uh, obviously one of the biggest trading relationships on the face of the planet. Um, currently we have uh, you know, an 80 year old bridge. Uh, we need a, a second crossing, uh, not just for uh, the ability to grow our economy over the next 30, 40, 50, 100 years, uh, but also it's in our national security interest as well. Um, you know, terrorism is a real threat in, uh, uh, in the world, and uh, economic targets particularly are extremely, uh, uh, extremely important. If anything were to happen to the uh, existing Ambassador Bridge, um, you, sure want, you want to be sure that you have an additional crossing. Uh, we saw with 9-11, uh, uh, the Ambassador Bridge wasn't a target, but when they shut the border down, uh, I was working on the assembly line at uh, Paulette Road Truck Assembly Plant at the time for Chrysler, and uh, you know it was only it was only hours and days before shifts stopped, uh, the plants ground to a halt, and our economies were in uh, uh, took a significant blow. So this is an extremely pivotal project uh, for this region and our country's future. Is the bridge on schedule? Uh, largely, yes. I mean, process takes a long time. Uh, you've got four governments involved, uh, two federal governments, the United States and Canada, uh, Michigan, Ohio, uh, sorry, Michigan and Ontario. Uh, the last hurdle to cross right now is uh, approval from the state of Michigan. Um, it, I, I think obviously everybody would agree it's taking a little bit longer than we'd like. We'd love this project to start yesterday, but uh, uh, politics is not always simple. Uh, I'm confident at the end of the day, though, that this uh, project uh, will be approved in Michigan and uh, we'll be able to accelerate it forward and get, uh, get shovels in the ground and move the project forward. Are you concerned at all about Canada's relationship with the U.S.? Uh, well, I think in any relationship, some days are good, some days are not so good, uh, but you have to stay at it. I think on balance, uh, the relationship is one of the most solid in the world. Um, and I think our government has placed a, a very strong focus on that relationship. Uh, 65, 70 percent of our, our trade is with uh, the United States. And yes, while we're improving our relationships and trade agreements with other countries, uh, this one has to function uh, as best as it can. I think we have a, a solid relationship between our Prime Minister and uh, President Obama, um, as well uh, members of Parliament at all levels. Uh, uh, you know, we have peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer relationships with members of Congress through uh, groups like the Canada-U.S. Interparliamentary Group, of which I'm a part. Uh, and uh, you know, you stay at it, right? Not everything's going to be perfect in a relationship. Sometimes there are irritants that come up, but uh, this is a solid relationship. It's a growing relationship, and. Uh, and uh, its best days are still yet ahead of us. What would you say to Canada, but particularly to your writing about our future? Our future is bright. I really believe this is Canada's century. Um, we are um, a, a nation not just of great potential, but I think we're beginning to realize our potential. Uh, we speak with a voice that matters in global affairs, uh, whether it's in the G8 or the G20 forums. Uh, our Prime Minister uh, uh, is a solid economic voice. Uh, because of our economic experience, we've done a lot here. We are the strongest economy in the G8. Um, you know, we have a lot of net positive job growth going on. All of our economic fundamentals are sound. Uh, so when, uh, you know, when our Prime Minister speaks on behalf of uh, Canada and Canadians abroad, uh, world leaders are taking notice of us. Um, but, you know, it's not just the government that does that. It's Canadians uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. We're resilient. Uh, we're humble. Uh, we're good people, decent, 
Uh, and uh, we're not only that way in our own society, but that's an example to the rest of the world. That's something we, we can be proud of. So our best days are still ahead of us too. We have uh, so much more potential to realize, but this is gonna be a great century for Canada. And uh, it's gonna be a great century for our riding. Uh, we've seen great prosperity before with the auto industry. That was the basis of the 20th century prosperity for our region. Uh, we're now diversifying our economy uh, with a new border crossing coming. Uh, and future economic investment that will come as a result of that. These are all great things. Uh, we're going to see a new, uh, better prosperity than even the auto industry brought. I'm Alicia Brooks, and this has been 5 Minutes with Jeff Watson, MP of Essex.